In Senegal, where presidential elections were held over the past weekend, a new figure has emerged, igniting flames of passion and stirring the hearts of the nation's people with promises of change and renewal. That figure is 44-year-old opposition leader Basiru Diomayofe, for whom a victory in the first round of these elections seems very likely. Pitching himself as part of a new generation of politicians, Basiru Diomayofe believes in national sovereignty, a fairer distribution of wealth, and the reform of what he sees as a corrupt justice system. As part of the election campaign, Basiru Diomayefe indicated that once he was in power, he wanted to do away with the French economic stranglehold on Senegal. And part of the proposal is to leave the infamous CFA franc currency bloc. Now is the right time to profile Senegal's Basiru Diomayefe, the 44-year-old who looks set to be the next president of Senegal and also become West Africa's youngest democratically elected president. Basiru Diomayefe was born on March 25, 1980 in Diagonao, Senegal. After completing his undergraduate degree, he subsequently pursued further academic endeavors, obtaining a master's degree in law. In 2004, Faye successfully passed rigorous entrance examinations, securing admission to both the prestigious National School of Administration, the ENA, and the esteemed magistracy program. Following his graduation, he embarked on a professional journey as a tax inspector within the Tax and Estates Department, embracing a career dedicated to public service and fiscal integrity. In 2014, at the age of 34, Basiru Diomayefe made his mark during the meetings that led to the creation of the opposition party PASTEF. In Senegal, PASTEF emerged as a significant opposition force challenging the dominance of traditional political parties in Senegalese politics. It was around this time that Basiru grew very close with Ousmane Sonko, a fellow alumni from the ENA and the founder of PASTEF. Usman Sonko, who himself was a public law graduate, rose from being dismissed as a tax inspector for speaking publicly about alleged tax evasion to become a member of the National Assembly and then later as mayor of the southern city of Zunguika. Over the years, a rare intimacy developed between these two men, Basiru Fei and Usman Sonko. It is even said that Basiru even nicknamed his son Usman in honor of their friendship. Basiru Fei later emerged as one of the key architects and thinkers behind Usman Sonko's presidential campaign for the 2019 election. At the same time, Usman Sonko's fiery campaign speeches denouncing the government resonated favorably with many young Senegalese. Senegal has a very large youth population. In his first election, Usman Sonko, the leader of PASTEF, garnered around 16% of the vote and came out third. Unfortunately, a few years later, Usman Sonko was arrested following an accusation of rape by a massage parlor employee. This meant that PASTEF had lost its charismatic leader. With several other party executives also arrested, the onus was now upon Basiru Diomayefe to take over and become the party's general secretary. As for Usman Sonko, during this period, he was in and out of court, but he had unwavering support from his supporters. His supporters said that he gave them hope as he was anti-system and an anti-corruption figurehead. As Usman Sonko was going through his legal wars, PASTEF did not die. In fact, the party won 56 out of Senegal's 165 parliamentary seats in the 2022 National Assembly election after having formed an alliance with four other political parties. This achievement emboldened Usman Sonko as well as Basiru and also led their supporters to believe that Sonko had a very good shot at the presidency. Just like his friend Usman Sonko, Basiru Fei also had his run-in with the law after he was arrested on the evening of Friday, April 14, 2023. He was taken into police custody for spreading false news, contempt of court, and defamation of a constituted body. This arrest came after he published a post on social media in which he condemned the trampling of the justice system, anticipating a conviction that would render Usman Sonko ineligible to run for the next presidential election. Along the way, additional charges were also leveled against Basiru Fei, including having called for insurrection and undermining state security. 
A few months later, Usman Sonko was also thrown into prison for insurrection and this meant that the two men were now both in prison. Several hundred opposition members had also been arrested since 2021 when Usman Sonko began his bitter standoff with the state that sparked deadly unrest in Senegal. This particular turmoil played a role in outgoing Senegalese president Macky Sall's decision to postpone the 2024 election, plunging Senegal into its worst political crisis in decades. At this point, I need to mention that Senegal has never had a coup. Also, the country has never before delayed elections and it has witnessed multiple peaceful transfers of power. But unfortunately, this very election season threatened to be very different. As previously mentioned, the popular opposition figure Usman Sonko was in and out of prison facing multiple criminal charges that he claimed were politically motivated. One of those charges resulted in a conviction that ultimately disqualified him from running for office. There were widespread protests from his supporters, prompting a brutal, deadly crackdown by security forces. Then, in early February 2024, the president, Macky Sall, made a declaration that shocked Senegal and the rest of the world. That is, elections that were due in February would be postponed until December 2024. Macky Sall justified this decision by saying that it was necessary to sort out confusion over who exactly was running for president. However, Senegal's constitutional court disagreed, ordering the president to set an election date immediately. Fortunately, Macky Sall complied and scheduled the election for 24 March, giving candidates just 13 days to campaign. He also promised to step down on 2 April, whatever the outcome. Following this decision and the amnesty to release imprisoned opposition leaders, Celebrations broke out among Senegal's opposition supporters after the two men, Usman Sonko and Basiru Diomaye were freed from jail just 10 days before the delayed presidential election. At the ballot box on 24 March, voters had to choose from 19 presidential candidates but only two were considered to have any real chance of victory. The first was Amadou Ba, a former prime minister from the ruling party, and Basiru Diomaye who was the leading opposition candidate after Usman Sonko's suspension. Meanwhile, Amadou Ba's supporters argued that continuity was just what Senegal needed. On the other hand, Basiru Diomaye electrified a significant proportion of the youth but also mobilized supporters among the intellectual elite and civil servants. Also, Usman Sonko urged his supporters to vote for Basiru Fay. The main message that was coming out from this campaign was that Usman is Diomaye. Essentially, Basiru Diomaye Fay's mission was now to bank on Usman Sonko's popularity to win the presidential election. Along the campaign trail, Fay promised the Senegalese profound change and left-wing pan-Africanism. He pledged to fight corruption and the French economic stranglehold on Senegal. Lately, France has been a target of embittered African complaints and criticism, especially among progressive French-speaking West African commentators and urban youths alike. In this campaign trail, Basiru Diomaye even proposed that he wanted Senegal to leave the CFA franc, the regional currency used by 14 African countries and pegged to the euro under a French government guarantee. While supporters say that the CFA franc guarantees financial stability, critics say it is a way for France to continue to exercise control over the countries which use it. In this election, many young Senegalese, frustrated by economic and social inequalities, saw Basiru Diomaye Faye as a viable alternative in a country where nearly 40% live below the poverty line and about 22% of working age people are unemployed. Preliminary results coming out from this presidential election point towards a win for Basiru Diomaye Faye and Amadou Ba, the candidate for the ruling party, has also conceded defeat. Basiru Diomaye Faye will be tasked with steering Senegal, viewed as a beacon of democracy in West Africa, out of its recent troubles and managing revenues from oil and gas reserves that are shortly to start production. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.